Some of you probably know, Mr. Ray had filed uh, an Article 78. Judge Zwack had, uh, had uh, ruled uh, not in his favor with respect to reinstatement uh, of, his, of his position. Uh, so what's happened in the interim is as follows. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ray's attorney has filed a notice of appeal. Uh, he has six months to perfect that notice of appeal, excuse me, the appeal. Uh, Mr. Zwieven has informed me that our corporation counsel that the uh, Section 75 charges have been uh, uh, drafted and served on Mr. Ray, and that uh, we are in the process of scheduling the matter for a hearing. And my question was with respect really to the criminal yeah. investigation. It's my understanding it's ongoing uh, with the uh, the district attorney's office. And and I'll, I'll defer to the district attorney. Okay. For any Do you think, as there. mayor, that this investigation went deep enough? Yes, okay. because what if you read the report, if you look at it thoroughly you'll see that in their sample, they expanded it beyond the fire department. And they've identified other shortcomings with respect to the time and attendance policy, the, the overtime and comp policy process, as it pertains to all city employees. And as I stated earlier, Mr. Tui has already put in place time and attendance, overtime, comp time, process, procedure. Yeah, I meant the criminal investigation. Criminal investigation? Well, we were only aware of, based on his good work, Mr. Tui's good work, the shortcomings and the discrepancies of Mr. Salzman, and then subsequently that opened up to Mr. Ray. But the answer to your question is, is given the information and the evidence that we've acquired, there is no reason to believe that any other department head, any employee, has knowingly falsified any document, thereby resulting in fraudulent payment for time and attendance, overtime, supplemental pay, comp time, et cetera. That's why I stated earlier, our employees are doing good work. They're honest folks. They give us a good day's work. So there isn't any reason for me, and, and as your request is non Tui, there hasn't been any request made, I should say, to contact the district attorney's office to ask him to expand the scope of the investigation. Okay. Oh. Are, are there any plans to, uh, to expand the timeline, particularly on Mr. Salzman and Mr. Ray, to figure out how much restitution they could they could potentially owe the city? Actually, that's that's an issue which is part of the, the, the criminal investigations process, which is between the district attorney's office and Mr. Um, uh, Salzman's counsel, and uh, that's 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 basically out of my hands. But the city would be seeking, and we've requested of the district attorney's office that this matter, okay, include restitution, okay, for the days identified that he received uh, without any uh, verification, and also with respect to the unlawful payments. Uh, one other thing, on pages 12 and 13, it talks about the uh, holiday leave, notably that the administrative employees in the fire department were getting both holiday leave and then the supplementary pay in addition to that. Uh, has, uh, has that been changed at this point, and if not, why not? That was a recommendation also by the controller with the findings. And you're talking about, for instance, where you might have a nine to five employee, mm -hmm. okay, who's working eight hours, being paid on a 12 hour shift, which is what the rank and, rank and file firefighters work. And what happens is those administrative employers are in the same union as the firefighters. And they are afforded that same benefit, so they are entitled to that pay. We're in the process now, and at the recommendation of the New York State Controller, we have to resolve that issue because there, there is a, a question as to how you could work eight days, eight hours, and be paid for 12. I, yeah, I was talking in particular because it highlighted that they were getting, because the rank and file got that supplementary pay for working holidays, but the administrators were covered under kind of the city employees deal where they uh, got that where they already ha had all of the holidays off, so they both got them as paid vacation and like right. the rest of the city employees. Ma Michael, you're correct, you're accurate. That's a long-standing practice, okay, that is derived from the collective bargaining agreement from the contract. And basically, that's, that's a term and condition that the union feels they bargained for in good faith. Now, we're at the table right now with the fire department's local, and that is one of the issues that we're trying to resolve, and we're trying to comply with the New York State Controller's recommendation. I perceive it as a gift of public funds. I, I don't know how you can substantiate working eight and getting paid for 12. If 
had this discussion with Mr. Zweep in our court counsel, but unfortunately, the contract is what it is. And under the Taylor Law, you have to bargain for any change in that particular term and condition. That's exactly what we're trying to do right now. Uh, I have a question for the district attorney uh, just on the criminal investigation. Um, do you anticipate further charges? Uh, I mean, I'm wondering why uh, if Chris Ray is accused of substantially the same conduct in this report as his boss or as uh, Chief Salzman, uh, why there are no charges filed against him? Is something we could see at a later date? Is this an ongoing investigation, or are you uh, done with it at this point? We're not done. It's a good question. It's imperative. To move on, we can't move on unless we continue to put in place the internal controls and a, a review and verification process of this time in attendance and overtime and comp time, etc. cetera. Um, and, and, and unless we continue to do that, we cannot foster the public trust. The, the, the public trust has been breached, and the sins of the past there is no absolution for it. And going forward, what we're going to need to do is to work together, as I stated earlier, the city council and my office, to ensure that these internal controls, okay, assist us, facilitate getting the public to trust us again. Because as I stated earlier, nowadays with what people are going through financially, it is unconscionable for this to happen and not expect public cynicism. So I can't govern. In a, in, in, a, in a time or in an environment where there is no public trust. And that's why, okay, I'm, I'm asking the, the public for its cooperation, its patience. Um, the, the, the fact is, is that I didn't create this mess, but I'm here today to assure them that it ain't going to happen again. It will not happen again, okay, during my administration. So, Mr. The message is, you didn't start this, but you are going to clean it up. The message is I didn't start it, but as I alluded to earlier, it's already in the process of being cleaned up. I'm responsible now for reviewing and verifying all department heads' time and attendance, okay, requests for time off along with their overtime and comp time payouts. Uh, Mr. Tui has put in place an incredibly centralized, very internally control-oriented with a review and a verification process that really is designed to avoid fraud and abuse. So the public should be assured, that's why I wanted this press conference today, to regain their trust, be assured, as I stated earlier, we are moving in the direction of reform. We have restructured this city government to be more transparent and accountable, and I will continue for the rest of my administration. But um, it, it, is, it is difficult, given what's happened. Mayor, uh, Mr. Smith, sir. You worked with the Corporations Council during the previous administration. Uh, Mr. Tui, you worked with the new previous administration. How much of this is uh, surprised? Did you know this was going on? Were you aware that uh, was so little control, so little, uh, so much opportunity at least for abuse. I was not aware that there was so much opportunity for the abuse. I was uh, assigned to finance uh, during that period, Jesse, as assistant corporation counsel. So I would attend the monthly finance committee meetings. And when the payouts would come in, there was always a question as to the amount. But there was never a question as to uh, its authenticity or whether it was verified. In other words, the question was, is what does the contract say? That was the question. And then I would be there to advise accordingly. Well, the contract says that you're allowed to approve, let's say, 30 days or 56 days to be paid out at your, at your daily rate of pay at the point of your retirement. Right. That was it. It was never, never any question, well, 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 how do we know? and so forth and so on. And see, that also falls back on the mayor then at the time, because the mayor was really technically responsible at the time, according to New York State Controller 2, in reviewing and verifying. So prior to that payment request going upstairs to the finance committee, and then they'd have to adopt the resolution, you know, for to get it on the floor, okay, to approve it, to pay it out. Prior to that, okay, there should have been some attempt on the part of the mayor then to say, wait a minute here now, you're retiring, or you're asking for this payout, um, let me see the records. And then, well, who keeps them? You keep them? Okay, do we have a secondary source to be able to do a reconciliation? None of those questions were asked. 
And the only question I was ever asked, and the only issue that I was aware of at the time, because I had no knowledge that there was an agreement between, for instance, in this case, the prior mayor and the former fire chief to be able to literally take time off, be paid off for time off, that he didn't earn. I had no knowledge of that. And indeed, if I did, that mayor would have been advised. That's unlawful. You're facilitating a gift of public funds. Regardless of whatever reasoning you have, it's a mm -hmm. gift of public funds. Yeah, so the mayor actually uh, uh, participated in you. I mean, you should You said that, Mr. I did well, not, I not know, say I mean, that. You just said that you, you said would that. advise him that it was unlawful correct. to do. That is correct. Right. But so, I never had the opportunity to do it. Right. Neither did Mr. Return, Mr. Tui did as well. Right, so, but In if you would have advised him that it was unlawful to do, do you think that this investigation should now maybe focus on the prior mayor as well? I can make that, that, that uh, determination. I'd have to defer to the district attorney. At this point, I, I don't, I'm not aware of any criminality on that individual's part. But again, um, I'm not in a position, okay, to, to, to really answer that question. outside auditor making any recommendations that were not followed in terms of tightening up these issues of time and attendance? Uh, our, our outside auditor did not make, or it was not a finding from our outside auditor. Um, since the beginning of 2011, we've been moving towards a centralized time and attendance system. It was actually during that movement to a centralized time and attendance system that uh, these errors Early 2011 is when we started this process. Correct. Right. After the after the Matthews matter, um, we looked more closely at the internal controls that we had in place. Um, we put in procedures to review uh, certain payouts, um, and it was at that point where, you know, as part of late 2011, where this also matter uh, came up. And There, uh, and subsequent to 2012, there's been several memos outlining time and attendance procedures. Now there will be a formal policy which will be presented to the Common Council. Uh, are there any, for either uh, the mayor or the city council, are there any matters that are still outstanding regarding problems with time and attendance found, or uh, are we going to be back here doing this for someone else, or has everything from the past at this point been investigated and everybody else who uh, hasn't been identified is directly? That, that this the investigation now okay with respect to Mr. Salzman has is complete with respect to the efforts of the district attorney and the New York State controller and Mr. Tui. Mr. Ray is still as you heard earlier ongoing uh, notwithstanding in the, in the meanwhile that the city has preferred disciplinary charges where a hearing will be scheduled with regard to his conduct so the answer to the question is, is that no you won't be back here okay uh, anytime soon with respect to anyone else engaging in a kind of inappropriate conduct that unfortunately we're talking about today. Just want to follow up to that, that question you had about public cynicism, and, and, and really I just want to just summarize that. To avoid further cynicism and distrust by the public, that's why I stated earlier it's incumbent upon the mayor, the city council, and the union representatives to work, cooperate together to take corrective action. That is the only way. And to continue what Mr. Tui has, has recommended and we've put in place. That is the only way. If we don't have a partnership, the mayor, the council, along with the unions, okay, the public will continue to be cynical. And it will just foster more distrust. So that's why I'm, I'm really respectfully requesting, let's work together so that we can get the public, okay, uh, looking at us a lot differently and that they can hopefully trust us once again. Um, uh, just a clarification, you said there was an agreement with the mayor and the chief to remove Kate Rousey and work. Uh, where would I find that? What, what finding you Actually, you wouldn't find that because apparently it was a verbal understanding between the prior mayor, okay, and the prior fire chief. So it's not in that report? Mm -hmm. so no. How do you know that then? That, that, I, that's what I, I've been, we become aware of that through the, the course, the, the through, 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 I become aware of that through the course of the criminal investigation. Yes. The, I'll leave it to you like that. The, the previous mayor's test, you know, go, he, was he interviewed by the Ellison County District Attorney? 
I have no knowledge of that. I don't believe so. I don't, well, Mr. Mr. Carnage, right over there. He's, he, he, I, I would think that he would say, okay. ask him that question. Okay. okay. Well, I'm here. Is there any, any, is there any questions I can? What was your question? <laughs> Whether or not the man's tile was interviewed during the course of this investigation, what he, what did he say? Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I don't have any comment uh, with regard to the investigation uh, concerning Mr. Ray, except that it's ongoing. Uh, and uh, I don't know how else I can say that. There's a number, it's a fairly detailed uh, investigation. Uh, we've gotten a lot of help from uh, both the city comptroller and obviously the uh, state comptroller. Uh, I have one assistant uh, who is uh, in engaged in this investigation, and uh, these things take time. So we what? will we will have a, a statement when we're when, when we've completed our investigation. Do you, uh, do you anticipate that any additional charges will be filed against Mr. Salzman, or has all of the charges been filed that will be? Uh, that's a fair question. I do not anticipate any additional um, charges against Mr. Salzman. Um, with regard to Mr. Ray, I don't have any comment. And how much longer, uh, roughly, do you feel that investigation? Uh, I hope not long. <laughs> <laughs> do we expect any charges against any other individuals? No. Right. Not, no, uh, based on everything that we've had uh, from, from all of our entire investigation, uh, we are focused only on those two individuals. Uh, we've completed our investigation part on uh, Mr. Salzman, and as I said, we're continuing to look at um, the allegations regarding Mr. Ray. I'm just, I just want to get a sense of the, the timeline here. Uh, how was uh, Mr. Salzman taken into custody? Was he just called and, and advised to come into the attorney's office? Was he actually arrested? Uh, I didn't handle it, Jesse, but normally in a situation like this, we would know to, I know I was, he's represented by counsel. Who's uh, the, do you know his counsel? Paul Gruner. Paul uh, And actually, Mr. Gruner uh, made Mr. Salzman available to us and was part of our investigation. Um, okay. So uh, as a courtesy to counsel, we notified him that we we're going to file charges um, and the date of the arraignment. I assume, Josh, I assume he appeared voluntarily. I assume he, uh, he did appear voluntarily in city court uh, and he was arraigned, entered a plea of not guilty. Okay, so Matters he wasn't actually term. apprehended by law enforcement, put in cuffs, brought in, booked, anything like that? We didn't have to run him down, that's accurate. Uh, he came in voluntarily. Okay. Uh. Anything else? Okay, thanks do you, uh, do you have any statistics on this kind of a crime, public officials being prosecuted in Ulster County for falsifying records or for I, I'm crimes of moral turpitude like that? I don't. Um, I don't. Have you ever, uh, have, uh, how many cases uh, have you, uh, prosecuted like this in, in your administration? Well, it, it, I guess we have to define um, public officials. And as you know, I assume you know, we've had a number of um, what some people refer to as white collar crime uh, cases. We just had a fairly noteworthy one, uh, which also was generated from the state comptroller uh, up in Woodstock, uh, another fire department. Um, so as these matters come up, we prosecute them. Uh, but I don't actually have statistics So as long as I have the microphone, I just want to throw one thing out there. Um, I'm here to support uh, Mayor Gallo. I'm here to say that this is the kind of work, in my judgment, um, that the, the public is looking for uh, and that we're receiving from this administration. And, um, I'm glad that you um, took the time to point out that these are matters, actually these matters were addressed prior to the release of the report from the State Comptroller. These are matters that when they were brought to our attention, 
uh, we took immediate steps. I can't take no credit for this, um, but the current administration took immediate steps to correct this matter. Um, they brought me in uh, involved in the investigation, which I, I appreciate. Um, I, if there's a message that I give to people, the sooner you can contact my office, the sooner we can get in on the ground floor, and the more successful we'll be on these investigations. And so, um, so thank you for uh, inviting me. And thank you, ma'am. Talk to you soon. Okay. And if you don't, if there's nothing else, um, you're yeah, long, you're long-winded. Okay, <laughs> so I I'm a little bit late. Hey, you here. shouldn't talk to it. It uh, must be that lawyer thing. Come on, so that was quick. I was, I was quick. Um, so if there's anything else, feel free to call me, but I do have to run. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Josh, thanks. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Kirby, go ahead. I'm, I'm here all day, so. Yeah, I know. I know. You'd love to just hang out with me all day, uh, the, uh, I'll let you talk this weaving. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you said, and I'm not sure if I heard it right, I think you said that this culture of entitlement uh, that you referred to over and over again was a part of administrations in the past with an S. So do you, do you think it goes, you know, back even further than the uh, Satile administration? It could go back. I, I, for, for all I know, you could speculate it goes back literally to the incorporation of the city of Kingston in the late 1890s. <laughs> I mean, I really can't, I can't, all, all, all I know is, is, is that uh, it, it, it's interesting because it is a fact that there were never any internal controls to ensure that this couldn't happen for several administrations. I'm the first administration and it's unfortunate that it had to involve a long-standing department head who had the respect of the community. It's really unfortunate. But um, I can't say specifically what administration, other than this has been a, I, I know in the last eight, nine years when I was up here, as I stated earlier, as, as Assistant Corps of Counsel, there were never any questions raised. Just, just cut the check, cut the pay, you know, you get your payout. The only questions I stated earlier to, 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 to Jesse was, and to Michael, and I think yourself, Paul, was they had a contractual right to it. Well, what does a contract say? And my background in labor and representing such employees is, well, this is exactly what it means. <laughs> Plain and simple meaning of it. That was the extent of it. It's, it's a, it's a, it is, though, sad. Because it gets back to the question from YNN that um, this does affect the public's trust and does nothing more than create cynicism. And at a time that we have in our city and to govern, that's not really um, in the best interest, not only of just myself, but, but the public, so. Anything else? We're finished now. Good.